Pete oh. Cooper, welcome to the Aussie Screen Printing Club, mate. You've been thanks. in the club a lot longer than I have, but thanks for coming on the podcast. How are you going? Yeah, not too bad. Um, Friday, frantic, but yeah. <laughs> been a hard yeah. week? Or are you full on? Are you cruising? Yeah, um, uh, pretty busy at the moment. Um, I'm a one-man operation, so it's always frantic um it's, there's never um um stuff not to do yeah, yeah yeah at least you're accountable to just one you know what i mean you haven't got yeah. lots of other people to worry about you can you can do things the way you want and need to yeah yeah um that's the one good thing about it so yeah so tell us how you got started how'd you get into screen printing all right um I was I wasn't sure whether whether we'd started actually doing oh, the interview. Yeah. No, we're in, right. I mean, feel free to just. Did you have uh, some questions you wanted to get through first or not? No, no, no. Just uh, just seeing where we're where we're at. It's all right. Yeah, it's all we're, we're all pretty natural here. All right, cool. Um, so how did I get started screen printing? Um, nineteen eighty five, about. Wow. Um. Uh. I'd gotten into music and was in a, into a lot of alternative and punk rock bands and you couldn't get their t-shirts here. And I wanted their t-shirts. So I don't know, I suppose being enterprising, I started to go do the hard yards to order their t-shirts, which back in that time, you had to go to the bank and get a bank draft in that country's currency and made mm. out of the person. And I, I, I think there was like a fee of $21 on top of it to, to get all that done. And it was such a, and you had to mail it off to the little address that you found in a fanzine or a magazine or on the back of a record cover. And then you'd just wait and hope that they sent you something. Um, sometimes, yeah. Uh, three months or so later, you'd get some shirts. Sometimes nine months later, you'd get some shirts. Um, so I was sort of doing that. And then I had friends going, oh, that's a cool shirt. Can you get me one? I was like, oh yeah, okay. And then it sort of became a bit of a hassle. And then I got to a point of going, I could sell at least 10 of these. I should be printing shirts here. Yeah. And, you know, and yes, that that is t-shirt bootlegging, but um, it was quite common back then. And um, also, um we didn't i didn't see it as that way it was like well no the 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 band is being promoted here and mm -hmm. they can't do it their record label can't do it so um it was i sort of saw it as a good thing um and that's sort of where i sort of started um well that was the plan and then i needed to find out how to, how to do it um i discovered that i had a long lost second cousin that was working as a screen printer um, in Sydney, part of the Aboriginal co-op in Glebe. And yeah. Yeah. Um, my mum organised it and I went off and spent a weekend with her and got the basics of screen printing and wow. um, the number of, a, of the supplier, which was um, Leapfrog Screen Supplies. Oh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Um, contacted them and got some stuff and started experimenting at home um uh eventually bought a little four color carousel with two stationary tables um which i've still got down the back and i, I still use for some things it's still going um and slowly started to do stuff at home um and i suppose to the reason I got into it was I'd always been interested in art and I'd done art at school and I'd yeah. left school going, I don't know what I want to do. Um, actually, I, I had a job as a, I had an apprenticeship as a, a sign writer. Uh, it was a painter and sign writer here in Newcastle, one of the still places, um, but oh. decided over that summer that I didn't want to be standing out in the sun painting mostly and not sign writing. So I ended up going back to school for six months and then I left there because school wasn't for me. 
I'd, I'd, I'd managed to make it through year 10, but year 11 was way too hard. Um, um, so I ended up then um, just working at Big W. And um, from then on, this became my sort of side thing. And I sort of got good enough to be able to do a small little few jobs for friends here and there that, you know, le legitimate jobs. Um, but again, I was printing in the spare room at my parents' house and laying shirts out through the house to dry and then iron, ironing them. Um, so this is on water base. Obviously. Yeah, it was all, all water based. Yeah. Um, and, um, and from there, it got to a point where I started visiting screen printers to get help or tips or whatever. Um, and there was rumor screen printing in or rumors clothing company in Newcastle, which was quite big in the eighties and through the nineties. Um, I ended up hanging around there. Um, oh, actually it, when I started to get a few bigger jobs and I really needed a dryer, I was going in and using their dryer at the end of the day Brilliant. when they'd finished their work and I could have it for 10 minutes, um, before they shut it down. So I was sort of in there hanging around and then, um, one day I was in there and just hanging around and I ended up helping for the afternoon, putting shirts on the carousel. And they said, what are you doing tomorrow? I was like, nothing. Like, do you want to come in? I was like, yeah, all right. So, um, so yeah, I think, I think by then I'd left big W and I was trying to work out what I was going to do. So that's how I ended up. So, um, so I ended up working for them for a while. Um, I worked at Onya in Newcastle for a while. Um, Sorry, who's Onya, Pete? What? Um, they're in Warners Bay in Newcastle. Um, uh, they've been around forever. Um, they're a screen print shop though, are they? Yeah, yeah, yeah screen okay. print shop yep. called Onya, yep. O-N-Y-A. Um, okay. uh, they're still there. Um, uh, not the original owner. But I've met the current owner a couple of times, but not in recent years. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I did some time there and a couple of other places. Um, at some stage, I worked in Sydney for a well. No, actually, I was back at Rumors, but not working a full week. But I was working two days in Sydney at another screen printing place that um, had an automatic machine, and I was um, that's where I learned, learned to use an automatic machine and was working for on it for a while. Um, I'd probably be damned if I would know how to work one now. Um, right. So um, it would take take me a lot of um, to a refresh on that. So yeah, so I ended up back at back at Rumors, and I worked through most of the nineties there for them. Um, oh, sorry, Pacific Dreams had a screen printing department at one stage. Um, they did a lot of a lot of surf shirts for Pacific Dreams, but also a lot a lot of actually they were the first place in Newcastle that had an, an automatic machine. Um, so um, I worked for them on and off. Um, uh, actually, my, my time at, um, at Pacific Dreams was just after the Newcastle earthquake. And yep. um, uh, that's just when all the imports were opening up for imported shirts and China actually donated a huge amount of blank shirts to Newcastle as, as a, yeah. a act of good faith sort, sort of thing. And, um, and they were really, really thin Chinese shirts, elite Chinese shirts. Um, but we printed all of those for um, um, the earthquake relief, relief. So there was, there was a, um, a shirt um, for those. It was just one color black print on, on the front of the shirts. And I remember, and the reason I remember it is um, at one stage we were printing 400 an hour on a carousel hand bench with three of us working. One wow. person putting on, one person taking off and, and spinning. And I was just there, just pulling the screen down, pulling <laughs> across, just going. And wow. if we buggered one up, we just got thrown to the side and just kept going. Um, 
So, yeah. and I just, yeah, just remember just going, man, there's no way I could do that now. Um, no, but, um, and now one of those um, t-shirts are, uh, is in the Newcastle Museum. So, okay. um, it's, that's uh, super cool. Yeah, it is. It's really good. Important time. Is that, that was around 87, I think, was it? Um, 89 was the earthquake. 89. So, yeah. Okay. yeah um, right. so, yeah. So then, um, then rumors shut down around 2000. Um, and I ended up working for, um, uh, a place in Newcastle. It was called the Sports Net Netball Shop, and they'd started off as um, supplying netball uniforms and things. But they had a manufacturing part out the back, and then they um, did a bit of screen printing and needed a screen printer. And I ended up being there for um, oh, ooh, eight or nine years. So okay, yeah. yeah. And when did you um, go out on your own? Like, sorry, keep telling me the story. This is great. No, that's right. That's that's that basically brings us up to that point. Um, so, 2010, March 2010, I opened up here. Um, yeah. So, um, 2009 was a big year. Um, I got married that year. Um, I had an overseas trip where I got married. Um, and wasn't happy with the situation where I was working and had an offer from a, uh, a friend and business partner in the music industry um, to um, uh, give me the capital to start a, a printing business for myself and mainly with the aim of um, printing band shirts for mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. his band his bands that were that were on the label and that seemed like a really good opportunity so i um i got out of that that job and worked towards this it was like yep finally i'm gonna have my own own place where i'll be the boss um so um that all happened at the end of 2009 march 2010 i opened up um and during that year, um, the marriage went to crap. <laughs> so, um, and and the, the original, sorry, she was the the embroiderer at the previous place of work. So the plan had been, um, actually, sorry, she was she had already moved on to another job. She wasn't there anymore, but that's how we'd um, ended up together. And. Um, uh, uh the plan was to eventually employ her she was gonna she wasn't working a full week then so she was gonna help me on those other days and we were gonna build a business up and it was gonna be everything and um yeah uh, i said that all went to crap in the first year of business so um pretty hard that was pretty hard so um i've basically just sort of i suppose fumbled on myself since then um um because that whole fiasco um uh, ended my band that was happening at the time as well and it 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 it, <laughs> it ruined a lot of things so the only thing that i had going was i've got to make this business a success yeah and right. that's pretty to, yeah. well pretty well what i did and then and looking back um during that time like yeah um I don't feel like I'm super business savvy or organized or anything, but um, I've managed to, you know, get a business up or an operating and keep it going during the absolute worst time of my life. So um, I must have been doing something right. So, yeah. Um, and um, yeah, and then I've just sort of carried on. Um, there's been some ups and downs. Um, uh, <coughs> excuse me yeah um but um i think i've 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 managed to do okay i've, ma I've managed to you know em employ myself um i don't i don't earn a big wage or anything i um uh i know i could be working for somebody else and earning a lot more but um mentally <laughs> i wouldn't cope with that so 
um, I'm quite sort of sort of happy doing what I'm doing. So, yeah. um, and again, I've managed to survive. I've always had work, and I, I'm not I'm not on the phone book. I'm um, I don't advertise. Um, everything's virtually by word of mouth. All I've got is a, is a website, a Facebook page, and an Instagram. So, um, and I've always got at least a month's work ahead of me. Um, and um, it, it always seems that even when it gets to a point of all, oh, there's not much more past that job. Suddenly a whole pile of jobs will fall in and I just keep going. So uh, um, I said, I feel in some ways uh, I'm not that successful, but if I was somebody else looking in, um, I'm sure that you're doing all right. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, um, and yeah, and um, uh, the old, um, I, don't, I don't know whether, whether, whether you, this is something you've encountered, but I always call this the, um, uh, an old screen printer's motto of, um, if you don't have any work, all you've got to do is strip some screens and within a week, the, job, <laughs> the jobs that were on those screens that you stripped will come back in through the door. Yeah, there, there is that, something about that. I get that, that happens time, time and time again. I'll strip a job that, like, no, nah, that customer hasn't been back. There's no use in keep, no point in keeping that. Um, and the very next week they walk in. So um, it's become yeah. a joke for us. Like we, yeah. you know, do a bit for sports people, and they always have their own brand printed, you know, their own neck neck label printed. And every now and again, I go, oh, let's reclaim those screens. Those guys haven't come around, and it's yeah. a joke. Well, now we reclaim them. I bet you they come on, and they do. It's peculiar. I don't know what yep. it is about that. Yep. Yeah. I, 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 I don't. Know. I, I feel I came up with that, but I, I don't know whether it's just something I learned along the way. But yeah, if you just need some more work, strip some screens. Strip some screens. <laughs> it's a great advice. Well, that's yep. quite a journey, but it sounds to me like um, screen printing's in your blood, though. You, you still love it. You still enjoy it. It's, I mean, it's a creative thing, isn't it? So, yeah, de definitely a creative thing. Um, um, one thing I said when I, I started this place was I was sick of doing um, netball, netball positions and <laughs> numbers on, on football shirts. I wasn't doing any numbers or, you know, anything like that. It was going to be, I just wanted to do cool stuff. I wanted to do bands and venues and events and, and things like that. So, mm -hmm. um, and I've always wanted to, have my own line of designs and that so i've slowly mm. sort of been building up things which i which i sell online and again mm. if i had more time i could market that better and i could be selling more of that but uh, and at one stage i was sort of setting up at markets on weekends but that's all got a bit a bit tiring for one person sort of thing so yeah um yeah and you, you yeah. don't want to kind of get to that point of Hiring someone else or? Um, no. Um, a couple of things. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit of a loner, but um, um, I always feel like I've worked for that guy that was a complete bastard and I don't want to turn into that guy. And I know <laughs> if I was employing somebody i'd be going no you need yeah i'd be going no i don't want to become that person so um yeah. and then i've had a few friends come and go that have helped me at some stages and i've always sort of felt well this is a sort of a, a trial run to see if i could employ them and it's never worked out mm. and um i just go uh, if, if i officially employed somebody um um it would be just too much stress and hassle and and I wouldn't be as flexible. I'd have to be here at the certain time and I'd have to make sure that they were doing the right thing and yeah. and I'd have to keep an eye on them. And it's like, God, it's hard enough to keep an eye on myself. So um, um, I just don't want to do that. Um, um, so, yeah, and, and again, up, up and... Up until, well, actually, it's two years ago. It's two years ago this month. Um, I did have another partner that um, um, 
we'd been together for a couple of years and the plan was again for her to become part of the business and um that unfortunately didn't didn't work out either so um uh, i don't know where i was going with that um so again i've kind of gone yeah i'm just better off doing it alone at the moment um um the other thing is um with the whole business is um between christmas and new year i'm about to move premises oh wow um, i've okay. been i've been here in this current place for well since 2010 so that's 12 years or whatever again <laughs> originally i was just moving into a part of a mate shed for a couple of months till till we found somewhere and i've stayed here for 12 years okay that's right. things didn't quite go to plan but unlike luckily he's a mate and you know the rents never change that's the other thing i've been on a really good earner here of you know the, the rents never changed and everyone's cool so that's been good um so i've finally um sorry I'm situated in Beresfield, which is just near Newcastle. Um, yeah. But 15 minutes drive away, I live at Heatherbray, just near Raymond Terrace, which is, and I'm yeah. right right on the on the highway. Um, and so, me and my previous partner bought a house with a large block, um, with the intent of building a shed in the backyard to um, move the business into. So that's sort of sort of been the dream. Um, and again, building a shed has been the second most traumatic experience in my life. Oh, okay. It's we've been through. We went while in the relationship. We went went through three different shed companies, and then still the last one just screwed us around forever and ever and ever. And and currently separately to that just tradesmen in general at the moment um um i had a plumber come in and lay all the pipes and everything underneath the slab before we put the slab down and the shed's gone up and he came back for half a day and i haven't seen or heard from him since and he doesn't return my calls doesn't accept oh, yeah. my text <laughs> doesn't answer his emails but according to his facebook page his business is booming um, so I've been chasing another plumber for weeks. It looks like I've got only one today. So hopefully I'll have water on in the shed um, um, in the next couple of weeks. So it's all, it's all going to happen. So the plan the plan is to move between Christmas and New Year. So okay. that's going to be a good thing. And it's just been so long in in, in coming. I was, I was supposed to move back in August. My plan was it was going to happen in August before I hit the busy period in the run up to Christmas didn't happen and i just went i'm just gonna have to keep working because i can't have an interruption now so yeah um yeah. so it's just sort of been further and further away um it's, yeah. it's amazing that we do get this kind of period over christmas where everything just stops i'm from the uk and nothing stops at any point in time and it should do right like i feel like it's important to get a break and i find it really hard to get away um during the year when it's all just full on but we get this beautiful hiatus where everything just stops. I know some screen printers continue. So you get that opportunity to install a new press or to move premises or, you know, whatever it may be. So hopefully that works out well for you. Are you going to need some extra hands to do that? I wish I was down in your area. You help yeah, um, I'm I'm lining up a few things. I've got, got, got my brother lined up and then as soon as I lock him in for the exact day as like i said between christmas and new year's so um i've got a few guys to call and go right can you do it this day and yeah. and and who can you bring with you so um but basically the, the major thing and, and again sorry with my mate who who i'm currently renting off um um again it's not going to be like a, another um landlord where i've got to be out on this day and gone um so yeah. i'll be able to take what i need and get done but mainly there's just the dryer the carousel um ex exposure table and a, and a few things like that that are the, the big thing so once we get them done um the rest i've, I've slowly been starting to take carloads home um every time i go home 
Um, I was packing the screens be just before I set this up. So, um, but, um, and again, <laughs> again, with the, the hiccup of not moving in August, I took stuff home and then I've had to bring it back and it's been like, just it's not what I want to do. Um, so yeah, so um, yeah, so the shed at home is um, 14 by 10 meters. Oh, um, right, it fill, nice. fills the whole backyard. I've got a mezzanine upstairs. Um, so um, it, sh it should be good and it, it, and it should make things a lot easier and um, uh, and, I, and again, I suppose I, I can't print like I used to, um, and um, um, it's going to make things easier on me. Um, uh, another part of my story is um, 2017, I had a stroke, oh, okay. and um, I had a stroke, and it was only a minor one. Um, but it's kind of ruined ruined my printing arm, um, and it's not like my arm doesn't work; it just feels twice as heavy and has never bounced back. Um, yeah. So it's just always been a bit funny. So um, and yeah, I've had a bad back for years because that's what screen printers get. Yeah. Um, so um, so yeah, so I had a stroke. Um, uh, um, and I, sorry, her stroke was in hospital. They dealt with that and said, well, you need to come back next week um, and just do some preliminary tests on your heart and things. And I came back the next week and did that. And they went, right, you're not going anywhere until we operate mm -hmm. on you. Um, and I had um, two arteries in my heart that were 90% blocked. And they reckoned I would have been dead within a month if, wow. um, if I hadn't had the stroke a couple of weeks before so the stroke actually was the thing that caused them to identify the real underlying yeah problems. which which has been a real uh i don't know mind-blowing thing of going wow if that hadn't happened and that yeah so um so that has slowed me down a lot i i i get really exhausted some days um whereas i used to just power on um so so um, working from home is going to be a, a lot better and give me more freedom. Um, yeah, and to be close to your house and the comfort of your house is is pretty cool. I mean, a lot of yeah, and, and I suppose even before all of that, that was the dream. It was always like, oh, it'd be just great to have something in in a backyard and just be able to work and do what I needed to and not be killing myself um, and not working for a anybody else um and just and doing artistic stuff you know um and i suppose like i i know what my bread and butter is when i'm printing but mm -hmm. when i go the extra lengths with a print as far as the art goes and and it comes out really really good that's that's the the pleasure i get out of, out of printing so um, satisfying um i don't know whether um i, I grabbed a couple of shirts that i've done this is one I did recently. Whether you can see that. Yeah, nice. Um, yeah. That's a six color print. Um, all, all, you know, hand bench. Um, but there's actually seven prints on there. Because um, okay. I'd, I'd worked out, I can't remember what it was. Oh, yes. The, the, the highlight in, in the white on the, on the writing um, wouldn't. Oh, it's, the sequence of printing it, it didn't work. It bled back in. So after I printed it and printed another couple of colors, I came back with a small squeegee and printed the white highlight on the writing at the top and bottom and made oh, it wow. look look really good. So um, it looks like a really big print as well. Um, so it's a, that, that, that's a back print. So um, let me think. I think it's about 30. Two thirty-four wide. Yeah. Okay. Actually, no, it's probably more than that. But um, it must have quite um, big plans. It's about thirty-three wide. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. So. Very yeah. nice. Um. So yeah, and again, that that was for a, a friend study the company in in Brisbane. Um, and I didn't make a hell of a lot of money on that job, but it was really satisfying. Going, okay, how am I going to print this? Um, how am I going to make this work? And then 
when it when it works, it's like that's the the satisfying, yeah, you know, the the artist in me, I suppose. Yeah. And that's so. the strange thing about screen printing is a lot of it's like problem solving, isn't it? What's the best yeah. way to print this? You know, from the separations to the actual experience on press. Yeah. Sometimes you seem to find that you know, the way that you'd thought this was going to work when you get it onto press actually doesn't work that way. And you might have to have to hit that color softer or hit that one later or run it through the the dryer, the flash again or whatever. And yep. I love that aspect. I don't actually do the printing anymore. And it's probably good. I'm not really a great printer or anything like that. I'm quite new to this. I'm much more into business. And I kind of miss that bit. And occasionally I'll get on the manual and do something. But it's always a mystery. Oh, why does that work that way? I, I didn't, you know, it just doesn't make sense to me. And yep. I love that part of it. It's, yeah. it's a good thing. Um, and again, I'm quite old school in the way I do things. Um, and I suppose I suppose my one fear is technology and things is going to overtake me. Um, there's a lot of things I see that I just go, I don't know anything about that. You know, I, I saw the other day on some screen ring group they were talking about um, um, emulsion um, applied at this angle and at this degree and and dried at this temperature and and your 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 film was this and it was so many points at this angle and I was just going, I don't know that's like I, I just like I just whack it on and it works you know um, well, I think that's like, the artist side of it you know that people are trying to take something that is artistic and is is art it's real art it, the, yep. the end result is an artist an artist's impression of something if you will and turn it into a science and I feel like you can err too much either way you get too scientific about it the art becomes sterile you get too artistic yep. about it you might miss some of the the trends but old school's good right not everything yep. that is new is good right? oh no absolutely and like i i still prefer wooden frames to aluminium yeah, frames right. um i don't know what it is and i and i you know an aluminium frame the screen is nice and tight but i find it's even it's almost too tight sometimes you just can't push the ink through and on a wooden screen it's got a little bit of give <laughs> Um, so, um, I've made a bunch of my screens, um, my screen frames, like I, I can stretch myself and, 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 um, and staple them. That's still been something I do. Um, my late father was a carpenter and made lots of, lots of my screens Brilliant. back in the day. So, um, and you can tell his screens, like his frames are just so good. I pull them out and just go, oh, this is so good. Like, you know, it's solid. The joints are great. Whereas the ones that I've made are a bit rough. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so that's that's one good thing. Um, and again, uh, you know, and I hear of different printing techniques and I know about, um, you know, off, having off contact, but I hardly ever use off contact. And um, I remember um, a few years back, um, I was in the States and a friend of mine's got a big merch company out of Boston and um, I was up there seeing what he was doing and I showed him a video of me printing and he was like, you don't use off contact. And I was like, no, hardly ever. And he's like, oh, you got to, I was like, no, not really. So zero so, off contact, none at all. The um, screen's right on the actual garment. Yeah, pretty well. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, so do you use it? Is there a pitch? You know, how some um, suppressors allow you to pitch up the front of the screen? Um, you can, but I, again, I hardly ever use it. Okay, wow. My, my screen sits sit pretty well flat on the table, um, and away I go. And and I know that probably works against me in some ways, but um, again, I usually problem solve and, and work it out. And again, if it needs off contact, you know, um, yeah. I know in. how to do it. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, hey, um, for what, just while we're talking, sorry, I was thinking um, another one of my prints that I'm quite proud of. Um, now, this is this is one of my, I call my own designs, but I didn't do the artwork. A lot of my designs are ones that I come up with roughly. And I've got a couple of friends, different friends that are artists, and I go fix this for me. Um, but this was an idea I had. Um, I don't know whether you can see that. Oh, yeah. It's yep. a 3D looking print. 3D, and yeah. it works if you've got 3D glasses. It pops. Yeah, so, wow. yeah. that is cool. Again, that's a huge print. Yeah, 
yeah, so, see, um, see how that would work. Yeah. Um, it took a lot. <laughs> it, it broke my head working out the separations and um, um, That's amazing. working out the separa separation and then lining them up because they're basically all the same except they're just out of sync and then there's a few reversed out parts so and again um that's in water based too okay so. that was the question i had so do you are you primarily water based printer you, you do both or not really um um i'd say pr primarily i use i use plastisol but i do love water base and i love the feel of water base and i, and I love the texture and um sort of that matte finish that you'll get with with um um water base opaques um mm. but um uh just fighting the drying up in the screen and um is just too much to handle on and again me doing all of this myself a lot of my longer runs i go and print some and i come and do a few things and i print some, and i'm always walking away from it so um the water base just wouldn't stand up so um um but again if there's jobs of certain fabric and i go water base is going to be better and then i have the the conversation in my head yeah but plus this is going to be easier but water base is going to look better and it's like i usually end up going just do it the hard way make it look good so um um and again i think that's why uh, i've got a good customer base and seem to have a good rep and people come to me because i do good print so yeah i think the thing about that you mentioned you're old school in terms of techniques and so on but that perspective no let's do it the hard way because it's going to produce a better result that's also the old school right in the sense that yeah. the modern school or the new school if we can call it that plastisol 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 and we're a plastisol shop for for technical reasons because we're very it's very arid where we are so we really struggle with that but to get a good print especially the tonal colors i wanted to talk to you about this and ask you about it because i looked at some of your own brand garments especially you've obviously got a thing going frankenstein but the covid frankie i really liked and there was also a print there that was um i made a note of it autumn fest the cars events you had a few yep. different design a few different uh, colors of prints there the colors that you're using um are that kind of muted old school again even kind of 1950s types colors on poster prints so those kind of screen prints yep. um that presumably as you've sort of just said i think looks a lot better as a water-based thing than it does on a plastisol yeah um absolutely and again um this is this is where me becomes entangled in in the business um like my my music tastes and um you know i love the the style and culture of 50s and 60s and a lot, a lot of it you know even even 70s to, to a degree um like the house the house that um i've got it um at heather bray um i'm basically restoring myself at the moment and lots of vintage furniture and Nice. um color color scheme inside and everything so um uh very much all, all of that so um and then my own range of stuff that i sell it's you know it's it's rockabilly it's rock and roll it's punk rock um i used i when i first started the business in 2010 or whatever um i was doing a lot of roller derby stuff um that was on the rise at the time so um i was involved in that so i was doing a lot of that stuff um so yeah that's that's all my art music you know influence um it's uh it's quite eclectic but it's i said with you know as i said with my with my music taste my it's quite eclectic i kind of like the good bits of everything and I kind of pull them all together and pull it together and and, and, I, and I suppose I suppose that's again the art side of things is um oh that's really good over there and it's never been used in this situation so I'll do that and and, and it'll look yeah. interesting so yeah um 
Just to, I've got to ask you, Pete. I mean, you mentioned about you know starting out sort of bootlegging the bands in the eighties, the mid eighties. Um, what bands are we talking about? Just out of interest, always keen to find out. Um, yeah, actually, one thing about like, I was going to mention about the the bootlegging of shirts, and this is how. Um, uh, again, only back then you either had to hand draw or photocopy. Um, and it wasn't until I was working at some of the places that I had a bromide camera to be able to do artwork. So uh, a lot of a lot of my bootleg shirts, I'd basically either photocopied or I'd traced the shirt and and redrew it by hand and you know hand stippled it. Um, and that became quite quite an art as well. And um, I suppose being a musician as well, and I knew I was ripping the bands off but I wasn't going to do dodgy bootleg shirts. They were going to be, you know, as, as good as the original or, or better. Uh, and actually, I, I get, actually, probably a few times I probably improved the artwork. But um, um, uh, let me think, things like, um, uh, like um, Scar Music icons, like the Specials, Madness. Specials, okay. Yeah. Um, this my, my era. Yeah. Okay. So... Um, that sort of thing, and then um, uh, punk rock shirts. I saw a lot of Dead Kennedy shirts um, in the nineties. Um, um, the Exploited, oh, Ramones, wow, yeah, Ramones. Just, yeah, fantastic. All, all sorts bus, of things like that. Cox. The Buzzcocks. No, I never touched on bud Buzzcocks, but yeah, oh, okay. yeah. Um, uh, I'm just trying to think. It's been so long. The Pistols. Um, yeah, there was, there was a few Sex Pistols ones, and um, um, there was a Sid Vicious one I used to do that I'd, I'd, I'd picked up a shirt. Um, actually, I picked up a shirt somewhere on, on, on a trip somewhere, um, and it was it was a hand drawn shirt, um, and it was a Sid Vicious shirt, and it had Sid before and after, and then it had a skeleton of him in the same position <laughs> and 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 it was it was just a crazy shirt and it was and it was it was a bootleg as well so i just basically <laughs> bootleg like that so and again um um down here in australia we were such we were an island you know yeah, you, yeah. like none of those bands came here none of those boot, like it was just a i just went and found stuff and brought it back so um that was a good learning yeah. learning um curve for me yeah, I've forgotten yeah. all about the, the Dead Kennedys and the the Ramones as well. Yep. Um, yeah, I wondered if it was the same kind of thing and the whole kind of scar thing in Britain around, particularly, yeah, the specials, as you said, and I think they became Fun Boy 3, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, yep. And like a, a couple, a couple of them did. They split in, in various ways and then there was a, a reformation in uh, 2009 with uh, everybody except Jerry Dammers, the keyboard player, and Oh, wow. um, um, and they've done an album, but they're they're down to three original members at the moment. But um, yeah, um, but again, also too, um, being involved in the music industry and all of that, um, I suppose a few of the bands or related bands that I used to bootleg eventually became friends with. Um, so mm -hmm. like, um, Ruddy, the guitarist from the specials, I'm quite good friends with, and we've, we've right. met a few times and things like that. Um, so, you know, in, in some cases it's been okay going, Hey, I used to bootleg a few of things. And, oh, that's right. I never got any money for those shit anyway. You know? <laughs> so, um, um, so it's been, it's been cool. But again, um, you know, in, in a way I am ashamed of my past, but, um, it, yeah, at, again, at the time, if I wasn't doing it, somebody else was going to be doing it. So um yeah um Do you know and then uh, i was gonna say and then and then i suppose at one stage there was a few months of one year in the late 80s somewhere that i was working for a, a backyard guy that sold in the markets and things and his whole business was bootleg brand shirts um jag jagman i think that was a that was a fashion label back then anyway and he was that was and uh yeah that was that was big even though he was only backyard that was big scale bootlegging with um no care it was just 
pump out this crap. So um, I'm glad I wasn't part of that. <laughs> yeah, there's bootlegging to kind of get by and enjoy the process and be into the music in this particular case. Yeah, and, and, and now, yeah, I was never a bootleg, bootlegger that was selling shirts off his arm outside of a, of a concert. Yeah, I, yeah, I wasn't that guy at all. So, so I, that's one of the comments I was going to make. I remember going to see a band called Echo and the Bunnymen in the UK back in the day. And I think it was Portsmouth or Guildford Guildhall in the in the UK, and came out of the concert. And there was a guy bootlegging posters, huge A1 posters that he'd screened, and I was just amazed, you know, that <laughs> someone could be that industrious and to do yeah. this thing called screen printing. I was in a band as a kid, and um, we were kind of, I guess. Yeah, I guess more kind of indie, moving out of the kind of punk era into more of the kind of um, Smith type um, sounds and and Lloyd Cole and the Bunnymen and those people, and we did have t-shirts printed, and we had the screen done, and even then I was amazed that there's this technology, which is what it is, could do this, and it could do it again and again and again, and that that's the bit that really interested me, but I remember seeing this guy, you know, selling these posters. And they were just brilliant. They were minted. But obviously it was completely legal. But that's a different thing. That's, you know, that's much more um, of an industrial enterprise than, than you know, yeah. Yeah. ripping off some shirts. So if you had, if you, if, like, there's two things that came to my mind as you were talking earlier. One was, you know, when you move to uh, these, I'll say new premises, but your backyard premises, yep. Um, yep. maybe it is possible to get some kind of apprentice to do the hard yards, to do the actual physical printing and train them up so that you could take it a bit more easy. Is that, you know, I, yeah. I heard what you said earlier about not wanting to be that so-and-so, but, you know, that would take the pressure off. Yeah, um, and, and it's a possibility. Um, um, I suppose at the moment, I just I just want to get the move done and yeah. see how it goes and and feels but as i said you know I, I have realized the last few years that physically i just can't do it to the amount that i want to um whether that's a uh you know a, a notification that okay i've got to just not take on as much work and make it comfortable for myself um but um um we'll wait we'll wait and see so, um also, too, I suppose, I suppose, with the uh, the way life's gone and all the disruption and that, I have, have had a lot, of, lot of mental mental health issues. So, um, I think sometimes I'm just better off doing it myself than having the responsibility of someone else, and that's the the, the pressure I don't want. But, um, but again, that I, I also feel um, that if I've got anything to teach anybody, I should be teaching somebody eventually because otherwise it's, it's all lost. So yeah. um, I don't have any children or, or anything like that. So um, um, yeah, um, it's, it's probably something I, I, I should do. So we'll wait, we'll wait and see how, how it turns out. I said, I, I'm hoping life will be just a little bit less stressful and um, less chaotic when I get there. Um, and, and, also, too, my, my plan is I want to do more artistic stuff. You know, like I, um, I'm not really set up to do posters, but I know how to do posters and I could do a, a limited amount. And I'd really like to be able to do some art type stuff that um, as far as that goes. And that, that's always been my dream. Yeah, one day when I'm, you know, I'll be able to do this, but it's never ever happened. There's never ever been enough free time or, or energy to do all, all of those things so um yeah yeah we'll, we'll see how we go with that so yeah well, i really wish you well with the move i hope that that goes well it sounds good to me it sounds like it's going to be a new chapter in you know the experience and the life but certainly as you said not losing that acumen that old school experience being able to pass that on to someone one of the things that saddens me a bit about this industry and as i said I'm new to it. I've been in business for a long time and different things. I wish I'd started this 30 years ago. Absolutely love the screen print industry. I think it's amazing. And it's partly because of the art side of it. Um, <clears throat> but finding someone that's interested in it 
it's actually really hard <laughs> you know yeah. finding i have this kind of dream there'll be a there'll be a 16 or 18 year old person that would just want to live breathe drink screen printing in uh, we had one person come in one time and they were so excited they, you know they were drooling over the the kit you know it's just amazing i was like wow this person really likes this but that was it you know most people are like yeah yeah i'm just catching shirts and folding them and mixing ink and burning screens you know so what do you not realize what you're doing this is this stuff's pretty cool but so yeah finding that person's the hard part i think yeah and and again uh, i suppose in one way i've had this thought in the back of my mind of if if somebody was gonna come and work for me they'd find me yep. you know just just as i hung hung around rumors and ended up hanging around enough for them to go, you know, you should work here. Um, you know, I, I guess surely there's there's um, young people that are interested in art and creating and, and you know, would like to learn all that stuff and surely they're just going to find me. But again, they haven't. So I don't, um, I don't know. Uh, it's interesting that you say that you, you find it hard to, to find somebody like that it's it's um obviously um um not just me it's it's not not just me going i'm the grumpy old guy that, that works on t-shirts <laughs> and, and doesn't talk to anybody um it's it's not that at all so yeah, yeah. And, and also you know some parts of screen printing are just plain hard work yeah you know, screen yeah. printing itself but re the repetition of reclaiming screens and you know resetting everything we've we've had people we've tried every buddy we're in a small town but it's a very multicultural town and we've had we've tried school kids 16 years and up just to clean screens and reclaim them we had one kid who literally lasted 40 minutes he, he didn't even get through one screen you know he came and sat down in the little office here and said i can't do this and that was it. It was gone. And you know, many. I think in the last in the last twelve months, Cena, one of the guys that works here, was saying that we've taken on eight people that have come and lasted at the most just a few weeks and gone. They don't want to do hard work. Not interested in you know what is an amazing industry. Not interested in art. You know, but there must be someone. Right? <laughs> you know, there yeah. must be someone that's like I'm really into this because I'm really into it. You know, there are like, how did that happen? I'm, my background's something totally different, and you know, I got a little bit into this as a hobby, and next minute, this stuff's awesome. Like, how, how does this work? You know, just drank in as much as I could online, um, but yeah, it doesn't even seem to be taught in tech colleges anymore. Um, maybe kids do a bit at school. Um, I was chatting to a guy the other day who was talking about learning screen printing, and he'd been doing quite a bit, and he was working for a company that purchased a screen print operation off another company, but they didn't have any of the skills. And he came around here in the end to burn a screen. And he said, wow, that is so good. It's so quick. And I said, what do you mean? Well, what he was doing was creating a template out of a vinyl cut. So he was dropping the artwork on a vinyl cutter, weeding it out, sticking it to the bottom of the screen and printing that. Now oh. that's worrying, right? Yep. <laughs> I said, Did you think you could go on YouTube and <laughs> just check this out? You know, so and he seems to be fairly enthused. He, he seems to like the the industry a bit, but it uh, seems to be very very hard to do that. If you were giving, if someone came in tomorrow and said, "I want to start a screen print business," whatever age they are, what advice do you think you'd give them? Don't. <laughs> I thought you were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> um uh what would i say to him um i suppose i suppose it's, it's like any job it could be re i'd say yeah i'd warn them that it could be rewarding but it, it it is a lot of work um you've got to really really love it but um i suppose for me i would say start off small and build from there but then i i i go would I have been better off if I'd, you know, if I'd bought um, um, an automatic machine 10 years ago, would I be better off, you know, but I was always like, no, that's too much. And, you know, I, I don't want to spend that money. I, I don't want to get that in that deep. So um, 
So again, my advice of starting small may not be the, the, the correct advice. Um, I suppose I'd warn them that you're going to have a lot of back issues if you're printing full time for a lot of years and to um, look after your back and enjoy it. Um, um, because I've, I've been plagued with shoulder problems, back problems. I get a remedial massage every two weeks and, mm. you know, it's still um, got the problems, but, you know, not just from screen printing, you know. Um, um, uh, I, um, I suppose I've played hard all life, all my life. Um, I was an avid BMXer in, in, my, in my teens and early 20s and rode pretty hard and crashed pretty hard. Um, and then I've... Um, throwing myself around on stage in a band for over 30 years and um, yeah, not stretched enough. So um, <laughs> uh, yeah, all, all my acts and pains aren't just screen printer related, but they don't help. So um, um, are you the front man, front man of the band? Or? Yeah. 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 Right. Is that a punk band as well? Um, no, they're actually a ska band. Ska. Okay. Yeah. So we yeah. started off playing specials and madness and stuff like that. Yeah. So, yeah. So uh, we're called the Porkers. If uh, if you want, want to look us up. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, stupid so. name. Stupid so, name. But we we ended up with it. <laughs> I saw the tees. Haven't you got Porkers tees on your yeah. your own yep. brand? Yeah. I wasn't sure who they were. Yep. Oh, I'll go and check it out. Yeah. That's us. There's, there's there's a few videos on on YouTube. So yeah. Oh, I'll definitely tune Going into back. those. Okay, yeah. so you'd you'd initially say don't do it, but then you yeah. let them know what the wear and tear is on the human body. Yeah, um, and yeah, I'd say yeah, start small. You know, learn with your water bases first, more than anything. Um, learn how to do it properly rather than fudging through it and getting away with it, and then having major problems because you didn't learn how to do it right in the first place i think that's yeah. that that's, that would be a, a good idea um um yeah um don't start with water base would that be a good no I, i'd say I, I i would probably recommend starting with water base oh, okay um, All right. um oh. yeah well i don't know i think <laughs> as an old school i think you should but um you, you need to learn with water base but again it might be easier to start with it might be, yeah because again with water base you're going to have all the drying problems and yeah maybe that will be something you should tackle later but um yeah but i suppose uh, stick to smaller prints to start with don't make the prints too big um because mm -hmm. that can lead to all sorts of things um and yeah start with simple artwork don't be trying to do dot screens straight off yeah things like that keep keep it simple yeah real business keep it simple stupid so um um yeah um yeah i say think for personally don't go too big too soon but maybe i've been left behind because i didn't go too big too soon you know um um, well, as I was saying to someone the other day on one of these podcasts that, you know, everybody wants to grow in business, you know, because we, we think that's better, but actually working out how to manage growth is more important because speedy growth can kill any enterprise. It doesn't matter what you do, what kind of market you're in. Managing growth is a total nightmare. I've been in, I think this is my 11th, well, this is my 11th business and three of them have been fairly Okay. And the rest of them have been ordinary and, and some of them have been absolute disasters. Um, but one of them in particular grew very, very quickly in the 90s. I couldn't manage it. I couldn't control it. It was very successful in a monetary sense, but it died because I couldn't cut, you know. So being able to kind of manage that and grow that the way you want, I think is critical rather than just saying, I want a bigger press. I want a better dryer. I want to, you know get the best of this, that, and the other one go to an auto too early, which I think for us, I think we've got the timing of that 
right but that's probably more luck than than judgment but i think that's the key is working out how to earn what you need or want to earn enjoy it without breaking your back or you know becoming a slave to the business which is what most people are it seems um and yeah. managing it is is key but it's really hard to do how do you turn a tap off that you, you know there's no force it to turn it off yep and and i i've, I've had a lot of problems saying no to jobs because it's sort of like you know this person wants to give you money so i'll get it done and <laughs> i've got to work now and i can have the time off later that you know um yeah. that's the way because like i said usually september december's my busiest time of the year um and i remember a couple of years back probably uh, five or so years back um i worked 38 days in a row without a day off okay. and it was massive <laughs> um it was just non-stop i had a couple of touring bands um friends bands from overseas coming through and i was doing their shirts and and yeah, of course it just just built from, just, everything came at once um yeah so yeah, yeah. it's difficult yeah. when that happens you can't yeah. um talking about um um being old school um as far as making screens go have you ever um seen um hand cut ruby do you know no. what that is i don't even oh, know what it is no back in the day we had stuff like this wow. and basically it's clear plastic with a red a red it's it's two sheets together it's it's clear a clear sheet and a, and a red red sheet and yep. basically um this does this this works as a as a, as a positive so you, you would hand cut with a blade what you what? didn't want and pull it out and basically this piece here you'd have a a positive bromide and you'd mask out everything that you didn't want you'd, you'd cut out the bits you know that's part of part of the logo this was yellow i think because that was the girl's hair and and, and all of that and then you'd stick them together and then you'd shoot a negative bromide to get the positive of this piece wow. but um that's an art that's been lost um and again a lot of band posters the big band posters that you used to see were all hand cut um oh, yeah. um by someone and there was um there was a poster place in sydney shub posters um was the big place in the 80s and 90s um um and they did all the all the music posters around sydney and um you could always tell their posters that were they were a hand cut um poster i don't so have they've got a particular kind of style that comes out of them yeah um i've got heaps of posters at home i'm, I'm li currently lining the the walls of the shed at home with um 40 years of band posters that i've collected oh, so um yeah. and recently just been in, enjoying them and just going man you don't see a poster like that anymore um mm. and know that they're all hand cut by blade and and mm. yeah um yeah. yeah so and a lot of those 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 band posters pole posters they were two colors um there, there was uh, a lot of trapping in in um the registration because it didn't matter they always printed the dark color and it just covered it um yeah. and you could just you can just see with they've just been hand cut and was yeah it was a real art to it yeah. um oh, yeah. yeah so no i've never, um, never seen that before yeah so just on the technical side for yourself what kind of press do you have what kind of oven how are you exposing screens are you using metal halide or what's the, the go um, yeah um but the one thing um, I started off with some with some good good equipment. I did new equipment. I didn't um, get secondhand. Uh, as I did mention earlier, I did have a, a partner, a financial partner at the start. And then when everything went bad with my marriage and that, I couldn't I couldn't make it into the business that he wanted. So I just paid him out and continued on. So he was. But at least I had that input at the start. Um, yeah. So I got a Gilro um, um, six color carousel. Nice. Um, six colors, four tables, um, and a Gilro um, um, dryer and, and flash cura. Um, and they've served me well. I've never had any real breakdown. Um, there's a few things 
on the arms of the carousel that I've replaced, but um, um, but they're not in business anymore. Uh, they got taken over by, I think, I think the, the main guy retired and um, um, they got taken over by another company that, that could supply me with um, replacement arms for the carousel, but that was it. Um, right. okay. Yeah. Um, so that's what I run there. Um, uh, exposure wise, I've got a, just an ancient, um, um, vacuum table, exposure table. I don't know what it is. And I've got, um, I don't even know what it is. One ultraviolet light. <laughs> um, yeah. it's, um, uh, the old round, you know, tanning lamps. Um, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. metal halide, presumably. That, that's what it is. Yeah. Actually, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, here we go. One of that style. <laughs> yeah, right. A Breville yeah. sun lamp. <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. That's all you need. Ultraviolet. Yeah. So, yeah. Very cool. So, um, um, uh, and again, when I started um, exposing screens at home, I had a couple of wooden blocks about this big, um, a flat piece of wood, a piece of um, foam um, on top of that, um, a black piece of fabric. I'd sit the screen on it, um, put a piece of glass on top of it that was heavy enough to hold it flat with the with the positive on it. And then I had that lamp hanging um, on a door frame. Um, I'd rig it all up and I, I'd expose it that, that way. So um, it's... Um, it, it worked well enough for a while. So, yeah, it was yeah, just that having, having a, good, a good thick piece of glass was, was the weight, the weight and the good thing in it. So, yeah. Um, so that's basically it as far as equipment goes. Yeah. So, right. um, um, and I see you're printing on Gildan. Uh, is that a regular brand for you to print on? That's a band yeah. brand, isn't it? I mean, that, that's, that's their market. Pretty well, yes. Um, it's the one that a lot of people ask for. Um, if you're doing bands or festivals related stuff, um, they oh, we, we want we want Gildan. Um, so um, that's mainly what I what I do. Um, and I've had a relationship with them for almost twenty years, so um, it seems to work reason reasonably well. Um, um and i suppose the next one i use the most of is as um yeah. people specifically wanting those ones yeah. um and they are they like are a nice they are a nice shirt um, they are they print nicely don't they yeah um they've got a nice feel to them um and um and then pretty well the next thing is i i get a little bit of stuff from um new waves um Ways, merchandise um yeah, okay. they, they sold a quaz brand um i don't know they've been, been around for ages but they've always just been my next go-to of okay I, I i can't i can't get medium in that color in the golden at the moment mm. have, have they got some yep okay bang i've got yeah, yeah. okay um yeah so they've got a, got a range of stuff and that's yeah and again um i can print all sorts of things but i try and just stick to t-shirts and hoodies um, mainly, I, I, um, I, I don't do much else. Like I'll, I'll do a few trucker hats. I'll do some stubby coolers, but um, I don't want to be um, giving too many options and be doing too many different things. I just want to stick to the shirts because I can keep it keep it yeah. rolling. Yeah. Do so like probably printing. Do you like printing on hoodies? Sorry. Do you like printing on hoodies? Um, it's, well, oh, I don't hate it, but it is, <laughs> it is, it is a, another skill to learn. Yeah. Um, um, as far as if you're using plastisol, the, 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 the right type of plastisol and, um, um, and yeah, and not having them fry on the table. Yeah. It's, it's a, tr it's a tricky one, but. I usually get through. Um, uh, again, I suppose another skill I've got, that previous place that I worked at didn't have a flash curer. 
So we yeah. use the heat. We use the heat gun for all of our drying in between prints. Yeah. So yeah. I've kind of I, I've kind of honed my skills at that. So um, sometimes when I'm printing hoodies, um, just so you know, if it needs three flashes, I might get away with two and a quick whack with the heat gun, just so the tables aren't getting warm and I'm not creating too much heat and it's shrinking. Uh, yeah. You know, so uh, I'll do things like that. Um, just yeah, to, smart. just the yeah, you know, push it through. Yeah, that's a, a clever hack. I was talking to someone the other day about. Um, we we now will not print on asphalt mild uh, AS color hoodies. Nothing wrong with the product; it's great. But just if it's going to shrink, that's the one that's going to shrink. And if you've got right. multi multicolored job, it's a total nightmare. So even just hearing what you're saying there about not heating up the platen too much and not flashing it too much, but having that little control with a heat gun, that's super yeah. smart. I hadn't thought of yeah. something as, yeah. as obvious in a way. Isn't yeah, because the heat gun's really intense and you can get in there and quickly do it. And then you're only heating up that little bit. Exactly. Not the whole table, yeah. And it's not, yeah. And, and yeah. sometimes, you know, with a print, um, yeah, you don't need you actually don't need all of it flashed you just need that bit and the other the, the rest of it can just print over the wet because it's not touching or anything so you can get yeah. away with it so yeah um yeah actually that goes that takes me back yeah we used to do lots of water-based stuff and wet on wet um uh, actually that that bit of film just run we on white shirts water base we used to do multicolored jobs but in the artwork would be things like the sorry the, you'd be printing red and you'd be printing yellow but there'd be parts that were overlapped and you'd print wet on wet so you get orange in the print as well yeah, and wow. and and the, there'd be all that in the pre pre planning and um that was that was a fun a fun thing to do as well so and then you'd have to work out sometimes you'd you'd, you'd do your test prints but oh, okay the red's actually too strong and it's not making a good orange so we're gonna have to um, um, reduce the red down a little bit so it still looks red but it's not as intense when it mixes so we get the orange, orange. and yeah you know, see that's the um, art that's real old school yeah. art I yeah cool. and actually so yeah again with colors um i was talking about technology um uh, mixing colors by a formula uh, is beyond me i see people in, in the i went one place and I'm sure people do it like, you know, measuring out to make this much ink, you need this many grams of this, this many grams of this. And I was just like, oh, I just, I just mix by, by eye. Like wow. I'll get a P, I'll get a PMS color as a reference. And I'll go, yeah, yeah, it needs, yeah. And all of my mixing and yeah, a mate I used to work with at, at Rumors uh, used to call me the color master or something like that. And I would, I can, I'm pretty good at mixing my colors. So oh, wow, that's a real um, gift. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah so, oh. yeah. Um, I said, I've got a PMS book and yeah, and I'll go, yeah, that's what they reckon makes it. And I go, nah, I'm going to put this in and I usually get it. So, yeah. So, and, so with and, and I was going to say, and maybe that takes me twice as long as doing it by formula, but eh. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's in a way it's easier i can't mix ink so you know i'm terrible at mathematics but um i don't know it never quite comes out the co i'm colorblind as well which is a problem but it never quite comes out the color that i'm expecting it to and we use we tend to use rutland inks what what kind of inks do you use what brand yeah m mainly rutland um a couple of Wilflex because i like how strong their colors are on some things i love yeah. i love the Wilflex red it's a good strong red oh, okay yeah, um, um but mainly rutland yeah um yeah in recent years yeah yep yeah um yeah. just a question no, about I was, say, I was gonna say one thing not like back back in the day when in the early times we still had lead in some of the the plastisols yeah. and i i've got a four liter drum down the back of of an old red that's still got lead in it and whenever i do one of my prints and i want a really good red I get a bit of that out and it goes yeah. in the mix and it just like it just makes it a pop. I go, gonna get the good red and but yeah, it's it's a bad red, but <laughs> um, yeah, but good color. <laughs> yeah, it's a great color, great color that old red. I'll, I'll be sad when that runs out, but still there. 
yeah. with your own clothing brands, um, yeah. do you print to order or do you just print a batch and keep them and put them out when they sell? Or you do plastisol transfers. How are you doing those? Um, yeah, never do plastisol transfers. And again, I, I have done that in previous jobs, but never bothered here. Um, um, I'll basically just print up a batch and um, and sell. And um, sometimes I'll print a small batch just to test the waters and, and then go, right, yep, yeah, this is this has been a good reaction. I'm gonna need to, you know, print 20 of each. So I'll do that and I'll stock up. Actually, if you look like all of that over there, which is in a mess at the moment, is my, my stock that I, I keep on hand. Okay, um, good. That's of, your of, my, of my own prints. Um and again, it's all in a complete mess because I'm moving and I and sure. um that's been the plan. So um so, but then again, some of my imprints that I know are easy, that are just one color, I only keep a couple on hand. And if I get an order, sometimes it's just disruptive. It's just like, okay, I don't have, I don't have an XL and I've sold XL. I'm going to have to just set that one up and quickly print it today. But um, yeah. I, I only do that on the, on the ones, the ones that are not important. And I, and I, I try to keep my, as far as the trickier ones, try and get the website updated with what I've got so I can't oversell. Um, yeah. And occasionally, you know, I'll give a shirt away and then I, I sell, oversell, and, and I've got to go, okay, going to have to set that up, going to have to get that done in the next week and going to have to print some yeah, more stock. Okay. And, yeah. and that, you know, that pushes me to actually do it and restock it where if it doesn't have to be done, I don't do it. So, um, yeah. So and I like that when you come yeah. to your website, you've got kind of like two doors. <laughs> do yeah. you want me to print for you or, uh, or do you want to buy some of my own brands? And I like yeah. that. It's very straightforward. And you, you well, work out. That's, the that's what I wanted. Again, just keep it simple. But for ages, I, I didn't have it set up properly. And it was just like, no, that's what I want to do. I want to go shops this way. Actually, yeah, for ages, all it was was the website and the, the connection to the store. And I didn't have any of the anything else. So um, I finally got around to going, this is this is kind of what I do. And yeah, and I've been meaning to update some of those photos forever, but that hasn't happened. So, yeah. But the design that you've got around your actual brand and the types of garments that you print, types of designs you print, is actually very much the brand of the website as well. Like, yeah. Partly because it they, those garments feature, but also just the look and feel of the actual website seems to work that way. But you yeah. also have Instagram, um, do you have Facebook? Is that something? Yeah. Yep. Yep. But you it's, don't Instagram advertise. And Facebook. It's just oh, yeah. word of mouth and people coming through those channels. Yeah, pretty well. Pretty well. Yeah. Occasionally, sometimes there's been a shirt of my own where I've experimented with with having a photo um, and and you know a link to the website and and I've paid you know thirty bucks for promotion of it and it's pushed it out a little bit, but otherwise, not really. No. So. Yeah, it's just yeah. just basically basically word of mouth, yeah. So, okay. and I said, and, and again, <laughs> um, not on my website, not on my Facebook page, anyway. My phone number isn't isn't listed, so um, it's send me an email and I'll get back to it when I can. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good. Cool. Uh, and you do your own yeah. separations. Yep, yep, yep. Um, I, again, very old school. Um, I still work in Corel Draw. Oh wow! Um, okay, you're the I, one, right? Okay, I, I am the one. Um, and and I'm using Corel 13, and they're up to something like I don't know. I think 27, 30s. I don't know. So, it. um, it. it's and again, it's a pirate copy I've had for tw over twenty years. It works to a certain degree. Um, I'll separate. I'll basically separate from a vector file manually. Um, um, I do have a, an add-on that I, I bought, um, called pixel splitter. So if I've got a JPEG, I can do a separation from a JPEG, um, which was something I didn't have back in the day, which is like, that, that's, that's a big step for me of like technology. <laughs> um, um, but it's only good to a certain extent. I, 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 again, when I'm doing separations, um, um, 
if I know that a certain part's going to be a problem, I'll either add or subtract an, an outline to certain bits and things. So if I'm working with the vector file, I can do it that way. Um, and yeah, I just separate it all out manually and do it that way. Yeah. So, yeah. Again, okay, very, well, very old school. And I know there's a lot easier ways to do it, but um, that's the way I know how to do it. And to learn that, I don't have time today. I've got to do the separation now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so it, it continues on. Yeah. 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 If, if um, it works. And, and again, yeah. I'm lucky. Um, a friend of mine that's a graphic artist, um, he does a lot of my finished artwork now for me. Um, he's, he's skilled in um, Illustrator and things. And a lot of the times I'll get, I'll get a file, a, ve a vector file, and I'll go, Corel won't open it. And... I've got, a, I've got um, Illustrator, I'll open it and go, yep, okay, I know what's there. I'll send it to him and say, can you convert this? And send him, he go, yep, and he does that, comes back, bang, I've got it, and away we go, so. So um, you're able to kind of outsource to your mates yeah. in a way. And get, yeah, get that done. so, um, and most of the time it works. Sometimes, you know, we've got to think about it. And often he'll call me and go, who done this artwork? I don't know what they've done. Uh, there's so many layers it's a mess how am i I'm like i don't know <laughs> so um yeah i always i always hesitate when someone goes i've got the artwork done <laughs> i go okay good show it to me and that's just like oh yeah and, and you've got to go back to the customer and go the artwork's not good enough to print they go it looks good on my website yeah it looks fine on the screen yeah but like, let me tell yep. you how screen printing works yeah yeah yeah, and it's like, and and sometimes you can't explain. And I just go, I'll just fix it. Don't worry, it'll be all right. We'll get it. We'll get it done. Um, yeah. Um, uh, somewhere I've I've got a cartoon that I saw that um, um, a boss is saying to the artist, "I need this fixed. You know, can you can you Photoshop it for me?" And the guy, he's looking at it and going, "It's only two pixels. I can't." He's like, "Yeah, but can't you Photoshop it?" And he's like, "No, I I can't Photoshop it." Then then the boss is going. Can anybody in here use Photoshop? You know, because this guy doesn't know how to. It's like, no, you just can't Photoshop it. <laughs> you just don't get it. No. Yeah. No. There's so, nothing, nothing there to work with. We've talked briefly there about, you know, what advice you'd give to people starting out. Um, are there any particular kind of tips and traps, ways that you do things, cutting corners to save time or uh, making sure the quality is good that you you think you could pass on to people? Ooh. I'm not sure there. That's a, that's a really, really good question because I'm sure in a lot of ways I'm really inefficient. Um, but um, um, it works for me. Um, How do you do your coding, your screen coding? Like, do you coat one side the other and leave it? Or is it one plus two on the other side or anything unusual there? Okay, I code both sides and for first sitting, let it dry, and then come back and put a second coat on the inside. Okay, okay, that's not that, heard that, that one before. That's interesting. That, yeah, yeah, that seemed to work work best for me. Yeah, um, so you get that extra stencil thickness on the top of the screen. Yeah, inside. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it, sorry, initially. Um, I dry them with the back facing down. So if it's going to fall, it's going to fall to the back. So I always so come it, put a put a coat on the inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I know smoother, there's... smoother um, experience with the squeegee as well, having that extra uh, motion on the inside. Yeah. Um, and again, I know there's different um, types of thought on how how to do it. I know. Um, Again, my mate that I worked with for years and he had his own business for a little while. We still catch up. Um, he was always like, no, you need to have it thick on the other, on the back side of the screen. So you've got a little well where, where the, um, where the stencil is to trap the ink when it's, when it's down. And I was like, no, but that causes a bleed on some jobs. So you don't want that. Mm. Um, so um, yeah, I think I've kind of, and I've experimented over the years, um, and I th that that's the way that I find works works for me. So, mm. yeah. Um, Do you ship? I, sorry, carry on. Yeah, I was going to say I, I suppose um, you know 
uh, nine out of 10 screens work out all right for me. You know, occasionally something goes wrong and I've just got to redo it. So, yeah. Mm. We all have that without a doubt. Do you ship nationally? You have customers nationally or mostly in the Sydney, Newcastle kind of area? Um, mainly nationally, but very little South Australia or Western Australia. Um, um, but I have clients in Queensland and Victoria, um, yeah. different, different festivals and things that I've, I've picked up that I regularly do. Like I've just done, um, um, one of the examples I did, I've just done the Ballarat Rod Run. Oh, nice. So I like that's that. happened in Ballarat. And again, that's just through word of mouth through the artists that, that did the artwork and he knows the guys in the, in the, in the car club. And, yeah. um, I've just become friends with the the guy there. Can they put on a couple of events every year? And and um, and 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 t typically, um, he was like, um, "Well, we used you once, but then we had a local guy, and he screwed us around, and it was it was horrible. So we've just come back to you, and we're going to stick with you because you always get it get it there on time, you yeah. know." Um, and then even with that one the other week, I was I was panicking because the couriers have just got so bad this year mm. or the mm. last couple of years um it, it they 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 arrived on the friday for the event on the saturday and i was just like couldn't have got that any closer um yeah, so Who yeah do you and, use to ship which career do you use um is it aramex or fastway it fastway. was it was fastway but it's called aramex but i keep getting it wrong aramex yeah i think that's right yeah yeah okay. um that's, that's who's taking it over. So, um, yeah, I haven't found a better one at the moment or, or one that will get me everywhere. And um, But it has – I have grumbled a few times in the last couple of years and just go, I'm going to find someone better, I'm going to find someone better. We, <laughs> we use TNT yet. or FedEx, as they're now called. Um, yep. FedEx merged or bought out TNT. And we ship nationally like you, and we find that they're brilliant. You know, overall – I could probably list a number of poor performances on one hand, you know, like they've generally okay. been really, really good and yeah. competitive on cost. Yeah. And yeah. again, with Fastway, I used to be always, um, I could get to Sydney the next day and Melbourne and Brisbane was two days, not a problem. Now, um, if it's interstate, I've got to plan at least a week, a week out just to give it some time. Wow. Because, because, oh, you should try TNT then. Because, yeah, those types of um times, you know, we're next day into Sydney, we're two days into into Victoria, we're two days into Adelaide for, from here, you know. So, we found them really good. Give them a go, yeah, see, see yeah. Because Ball Ballarat took four days, so oh, okay, yeah, which you know, wasn't too bad. They got it there, so I can't complain, but um, yeah, just a few times where it's just been. And then, and, and also the, the problem of it hasn't been delivered, it's with our courier. Okay, well, where is it? The guy will go and get it. Oh, it's in transit. I was like, where is it? Yeah, <laughs> so, we know that part. <laughs> yeah, so we're in transit. Um, yeah, so I did that one in, in um, Victoria. This is another one I do in Queensland for Bacon Fest that happens in Kingaroy. Bacon um, Fest, that's awesome. Yeah, so, um, so we do it, me and my, my design mate, we do a shirt every year, a different one for them. Um, this was the 2021. Sorry, they have Bacon Man, who, who's their their mascot, is a, is a guy in a bacon suit. Um, so we draw him up every year, and Bacon Man's doing different things. This was the 2021 where where they were going to have it, and then they couldn't. Um, so this was him um, laying low during the lockdown, the 2020 hamdemic. Nice. So um, so that was him just on a couch. I really like um, the two reds in that. Uh, yeah. So that's, that, that's basically been been their their colours every year. So we've done a different one. There was one where he's a rodeo guy on the back of a pig. Um, oh, and, I've seen that. I've yep. seen that image. Yeah. Yep. I've and seen um, um, and the this year's one. Yeah, this year's one. Um, you know, it was the first one back, and also Kingaroy is a big peanut capital of of Australia. Um, and they just got the big peanut in town. So we had Bacon Man um, dancing with a big peanut and um, and it was go nuts you know, for Bacon Fest. So 
yeah so yeah. that's been a, a really good one so that that's sort of the kind of work i do and they're just you know friendships i've made through different connections and um we didn't they know i always deliver so we sort we sort of do them so and, and they're again they're the fun ones coming up with the ideas um yeah. so yeah. like um my mate simon um he's um rockefeller industries um he's based in um in Jindabyne and does a lot of design work and um i'll call him up and go okay we've got to do bacon fest again it's coming up what, what ideas are we doing? and we just go back and forth and nice. um and finally yeah so it Develop always comes idea. to us so yep yeah. so that's been good so yeah um so yeah um i'm quite surprised how widespread all my my clients are but yeah it's good yeah it's brilliant and also through no advertising, you know, it's, it, yep. it speaks volumes for your customer service and the quality of the product. So yes. That's everything, man. Uh, for sure. It's good. Well, yep. look, um, any quick questions for me at all before we move on? No, no I, don't, I don't think so. Um, I think we've, we've co covered pretty well everything. I've, I've talked a hell of a lot, so that's good. Yeah, that's, good. that's what it's about, for sure. <laughs> Pete, thanks so much for coming on this show. I really appreciate it. That's it's right. Been thanks, really thanks for having me. Oh, thanks for in, inviting me along. It's, yeah, it's been a real pleasure. I love your brand. I love your work. I love the colours, the style, everything about it. Uh, sadly, we're not in that kind of style, and it kind of irks me a bit that, you know, because there's something special about the old school, not just the practices, but the quality and the designs. And that's why the whole kind of retro market exists because people look back and go, actually, that was pretty cool. That was better. So thank you very much. Thanks for sharing about the music as well. That That's really triggered a few memories in my small mind back in the day. Mm -hmm. So yeah, thanks for being part of it. And we'll catch up with you again after you move. Hopefully uh, things yeah. will go well. Yeah, and, we, we, uh, we should, should do another one when, when I'm in the shed and I can show you around. So. Yeah, definitely. And if awesome. I'm passing, I'll pop in if that's uh, if that's good. Yeah, yep, yep. No, no problem. So yeah, all good. All right. I'll be Thanks, I'll be wel welcoming visitors once I've got set up. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. Come yeah. see those posters. Yep. All right. All right. Well, you cool. take care, Pete, and I'll speak right. to you again. Thanks so cool. much. Thank you. See ya. Mm -hmm.